Released by Fully Ramblematic in 2003 on the PC, Five Days of Stranger would be the premiere entry of the Jizo Mythos series. Written and directed by creator Ben Croshaw, also known as Yahtzee in the Zero Punctuation Review series, the game would be developed as a solo effort. For story, the game features a gentleman thief going by the name of Trilby, alongside four other people all trapped in a strange house with a dark past. For gameplay, conventions typical of a point-and-click adventure would be used, as players may move, look around, talk, and use key items on interactive points. The story only gets larger from here, so let's cut it down to size with a recapitation. As the game begins, it's the year 1993 as we see a mysterious man who goes by the name of Trilby drive towards a house that his fence is informed above. Apparently, the last of the Defoe line has recently died with no heirs, making the deserted manor ripe for the picking. Donning a black velvet mask, the gentleman thief easily enters the manor as the window shuts promptly behind him and he looks around the office of the late Clarence Defoe. Dismayed to find the safe empty, he explores more of the mansion, stepping out and immediately panicking a man who runs away. Seeing the manor isn't as abandoned as he thought, he wonders if his mask is what startled him as he removes it. Spotting a newspaper, he quickly scans that the previous owner was found dead, hanging from a tree in his front yard, and his recent bride Julia was also found dead in the mansion stabbed to death. The act was ruled a murder-suicide and the case was closed, though Clarence's solicitor openly questioned that conclusion. As he checks the front door, he notices it lacks any locks, yet refuses to open, and in the next room there is a news report on the television sharing how Clarence had recently proven his Defoe lineage and had been renovating the abandoned family mansion in preparation for his marriage. In the next room, another man greets Trilby, wondering when rescue is going to show up, as he has been here for days. He wonders how they get out as Trilby explains he got in through a window that would jam shut on its own. Deflated, the jacketed man remarks how the house now has a new guest, introducing himself as Phil Hardy. Ominously, he reveals that Trilby is now a prisoner like the rest of them, as once you get in, the house won't let you leave. He's already tried every door and window, and tried climbing the wall and digging under it, but nothing works. Confused, Trilby wonders what's keeping them, and Phil says he has no idea, but there are three more captives. Jim, a boy who turned up after Phil, Simone Taylor, a news reporter here for a story, and AJ, a man who keeps to himself, though was the first one here. Tracking down the others, he finds Simone, who comments how she's heard of the cat burglar Trilby's reputation. Going outside, he notes many holes in the garden that seem less like tunneling and more like searching, and runs into Jim who was trying to climb over the wall from a tree, but noted the ravine just outside. With AJ unable to be found, the rest meet up as Trilby verifies the situation and takes time to question them all. Simone shares there has been odd stories involving this manor for decades, starting with the original owner and his son. Phil mentions he came here looking for artifacts, hearing of a very old tomb beneath the house, and calls himself a treasure hunter entirely unlike a normal thief. Jim doesn't know anything about the house other than some local ghost stories, as he came in on a dare from a schoolmate to knock on the door and run away. But when the door opened, he was dared again to step inside, and once he did, the door closed behind him and trapped him. Hearing all this, Trilby notes the pattern that the house seems to trap people one at a time, and not in a group. The group is not so keen to agree to something so supernatural, and for now, note AJ is the other man here, but is nowhere to be seen. That night, Trilby has a vivid nightmare about discovering Phil, Simone, and Jim all dead in the foyer, and he was the culprit behind a welding mask. Waking up, he resumes his investigation, and strangely, Simone shares she had the same dream about finding all of them murdered, and in hers, Trilby was also the man behind the welding mask. Looking around, he observes the hunting habits of Roderick Defoe, the original builder of the house, who led an adventurous life before settling down, where his wife died after giving birth to his only son. Though, when the son turned 15, both Defoes disappeared suddenly and mysteriously, never to be seen again. Finding a map, he learns there is indeed an underground area as Phil has suspected, but also a hidden staircase in the kitchen. Going out to inform Phil of his discovery, he notices something strange in the pool, and after draining it, is shocked to discover the missing AJ chained to the bottom. Furthermore, he was clearly killed beforehand as someone has sliced his throat open. Quickly alerting the others, Phil is quick to accuse Trilby of being the murderer, though Simone doesn't agree, and Trilby thinks they are all being haunted. Suddenly in the bathroom, Trilby hears the voice of a boy pleading with his father, and as he moves to investigate, he finds a message written in blood, and out of the blood-filled tub, a skeleton rises out to seize him and drag him under. Waking up from this nightmare, Trilby finds himself waken up by Jim the next day, where on the TV a news report comes up that the solicitor with the keys to the manor was found dead today, having hung himself. Inexplicably, Trilby's car is now parked in the backyard, and within the thief finds his misplaced lockpicks. Nearby, Simone finds that AJ was a government agent and a strange rip of leather like from a blacksmith's apron on his body. 
Lockpick in hand, Trilby inspects the locked rooms upstairs, finding a diary in one room from Roderick Defoe himself, mentioning some sort of horror he unleashed upon the world. Noting some blood seep out of the window, he is surprised to find it opens, leading to the backyard. Climbing out from there, he swings into the adjacent room with his grappling hook umbrella secret tool, and finds the room of Roderick Defoe's son, Matthew. Matthew also kept a diary, and mentioned meeting a strange boy behind the kitchen door that he liked to talk to, though one day Roderick would kill the strange boy. Finding a book on white magic, Trilby wonders if he can communicate with the dead to solve this mystery, and with the proper tools, Trilby breaks into the secret passage in the kitchen, finding an empty room save for a pair of manacles on the wall. Searching further, he finds small bones buried here too, suspecting them to be Matthew Defoe, but finds something off about the skeleton. Digging further, he unearths a second, larger body, thinking this to be Roderick, and notes he was killed by a large stabbing weapon, but now wonders who could have killed both Defoe's. Just then, the sound of something smashing apart catches his attention, and investigating, he finds in the den a broken jar on the ground, and within, a wooden idol with strange stains on it. Reaching down to grab it, he suddenly blacks out. The next day, Trilby has a vision of Phil dead and himself as the bloody blacksmith, before Simone knocks him out and he wakes up in the shed in the backyard, questioning what's real. Finding the door locked and Simone outside, she insists Trilby really did kill Phil. She explains a man dressed as a blacksmith chased them all with a machete and killed Phil, and when they knocked him out, they unmasked him to be Trilby. Cleverly, he gets his tie back from her, where his lockpicks are hidden, and as he escapes, he cannot find Simone or Jim anywhere. Simone actually finds him first, now believing Trilby's claim of innocence, as she says she just saw the killer in the welding mask again. On cue, the killer enters the room, machete in hand, though Trilby adeptly trips him, knocking him out and exposing him to be Jim behind the mask. The next day, Trilby reinforces that Jim was possessed, just like he was, and cannot remember what has happened. Knowing they are now contending with a killer ghost, according to a book they found on the occult, they can trap the evil spirit in a body to make it quasi-mortal, and then defeat it. Going over what they know, they suspect Roderick actually had more than one son, as it would explain the reference Roderick made about creating a monster, the note Matthew made about the boy he would talk to, and the manacles in the basement. Since the mother died in birth, it was likely from the strain of delivering twins. On the boy's 15th birthday, Roderick mentioned going to destroy the monster, and that likely meant he moved to kill the twin, but clearly it did not work, as the twin killed Roderick and Matthew with a machete, but died of his wounds later anyway. Regardless of the circumstances, they need to destroy the boy's tormented soul in order to escape, and so consult a book on black magic for an appropriate ritual. Dowsing the location of the other child's body, Trilby discovers the remains buried underneath the bathroom he had his nightmare in. Preparing the ritual in the den, Jim and Simone gather around as Simone is given Roderick's gun as Trilby begins the incantation. Summoned back to this plane, the bones rise up to fill the bloody blacksmith apparel, and Simone wastes no time in shooting the tortured soul, destroying it within its body to finally end things. As the remains catch fire, the rest of the manor soon takes flame as well, as the group finds they can finally leave, evidence that the Resident Evil has been exorcised. As the game ends, Jim and Simone meet up with the police on scene, but see that Trilby is nowhere to be found. On his own, the gentleman thief quietly slips away into the night, eager to put this Nightmare of the Living Dead behind him. Five Days a Stranger is free, so go download it, enjoy, and donate to the creator, worldwide.